Good morning, everyone. I'll continue with this topic, which I have taught in the last lecture, which was known as greenhouse effect. As promised to you, that I will be showing you some of the slides, which will show you this phenomenon, which is known as greenhouse effect. As already told to you, that the mean Earth surface temperature is increasing day by day, and it is creating problem on this Earth. There is floods in the rivers. The glaciers are melting due to trapping of the solar air radiations. What actually is happening is that the gases which are there in the Earth atmosphere, basically carbon dioxide gas, along with that I have, I have already discussed that sulfur hexafluoride, methane, nitrous oxide, chlorofluorocarbons, where they were responsible for the trapping of solar energy, uh, solar radiation from the sun, and they are not re radiated back into the atmosphere. Now let us see this slide. What actually is happening is that solar, this is sun, solar radiation is coming, clouds and greenhouse gases trap some of the infrared radiation and they, some of the radiation they are again going back into the atmosphere. Therefore, this slide shows you that how solar radiations are reaching to the earth, they are, uh, they are uh, absorbed by most of the objects and they are again radiated back into the atmosphere. Let us see uh, this, how this is taking place, the mechanism I have drawn on the blackboard. But you can see from this slide, I, I told you that I will be showing some of the slide. This is sun, the solar radiations are coming, then they are striking the earth's surface, they are again going back. But some of the solar radiation, yeah, that is infrared radiation which are of high wavelength, they are trapped with this, this region of the atmosphere causing the heat effect or the warming of the atmosphere. So the, the, uh, these are the two slides, when the solar radiations come from the sun, it allows to pass through it, but when there are several gases which are present in the atmosphere, they will block these radiations and these radiations will be trapped in the earth atmosphere and they can't go back into the atmosphere thereby increasing the temperature of the earth and which is known as global warming. This is uh, I know I told you that what is the comparison between our greenhouse effect and why it is known as uh, greenhouse effect. You know this is a house which is made for nursery purpose and this the stock there is there. This, these are the glass or the plastic. These are the windows and there are some green plants inside this. Uh, what actually is happening is that when the solar radiation enters through this window and the interior of this house becomes much much warmer than the exterior of the house due to lack of convection that is mixing of the interior air with the exterior air. Now you see that this is interior of that house in which plants are there. Uh, I told you that when solar radiation comes inside the temperature is increasing from digital meter it must be visible or not I don't know. But here this temperature display is there that is the interior of the house becomes much much warmer than the exterior. So this is how the global warming is taking place. Another example which I have discussed with you was the car when it, it was left in the open sunlight. We have seen that when the solar radiation goes inside the car which consists of uh, uh, visible and IR. The incoming IR radiations they are of short wavelength but the outgoing they are of uh, higher wavelength that is the heat energy and the interior of the car becomes much much warmer than the exterior uh, therefore they, in, there has been increase in the temperature along with the carbon dioxide there are several other gases as spoken it is methane is present and which is responsible for trapping the solar energy and then ozone is also responsible for trapping some of the uh, energy solar energy then we have nitrous oxide which I told in the last lecture this nitrous oxide is responsible for trapping of the solar radiation then we have CFC which is known as freons or chlorofluorocarbon today's lecture we will discuss much chemistry of this freon which is known as uh, chlorofluorocarbons Therefore, this, this was something related to uh, greenhouse effect and then we'll, uh, we, this slide shows that this is one of the glaciers which were of uh, 
which is which was very high, which was very big, but now due to increase in the temperature of the earth, this glacier is melting day by day, and ultimately the animal life and plant life which were acquainted with this environment is certainly affected. The sea level is also increasing due to melting of these glaciers. Therefore, this is one of the major problem which is there due to global warming. In my today's lecture, I'll discuss about the ozone. You must have heard this very common term which is known as ozone. But before starting the ozone, I would like to discuss various regions of the atmosphere. The part of the atmosphere where we live, it is known as troposphere. Troposphere. Above troposphere, when we move uh, about 20 to 40 kilometers above the earth's surface, then there is another layer which is known as stratosphere. Now you will see, uh, you will uh, think that why sir is talking about different layers of the atmosphere. The reason is that we human being we are living in this layer of the atmosphere which is known as troposphere. And uh, then we have about 20 to 40 kilometers above the earth's surface there is another layer which is known as the stratosphere and between the stratosphere and troposphere there is a small thin layer which is known as tropopause now the supersonic aircraft they fly in this region of the atmosphere near to that region which is known as the stratosphere most of the climatic conditions they are observed in tropopause and troposphere. Why I am talking in, uh, about this stratosphere? It is because of the reason that the maximum concentration of ozone is present in this layer which is known as stratosphere. We are in the last lecture I have told you that the sunlight it consists of UV ultraviolet then visible and IR radiations. This visible light uh, consists of UV. This UV is trapped by the ozone which is present in the stratosphere. Therefore, you see that how nature is protecting us from this harmful radiation which is known as ultraviolet light. And in the later uh, discussion, I will uh, discuss about that what is the effect of this uh, ultraviolet light. Had there been no ozone layer in the stratosphere, then what would have happened to this earth, to the human life, to the plant life and to the environment. Therefore, this is very important region which is known as the stratosphere which is responsible for trapping the ultraviolet light because ozone is present, this ozone is primarily responsible for trapping the ultraviolet light which is coming from the sun. Now, let us discuss about the chemistry of ozone. What is the formula of ozone? Ozone chemically it is written as O3. It is an allotrope, A-L-O-T-R-O-P, allotrope of oxygen. That is, it is produced from oxygen in the presence of ultraviolet light. How it is produced? Let us see that. In the presence of ultraviolet light, the ozone breaks into molecular oxygen and atomic oxygen in the presence of ultraviolet light. There is some um, one more reaction which is taking place. Sometimes the molecular oxygen in the presence of ultraviolet light it get dissociated into atomic oxygen. There is simultaneous reaction taking place. Sometimes this molecular oxygen react with the atomic oxygen to produce ozone in the presence of ultraviolet light. Therefore, you see that there is dissociation of the ozone in the presence of ultraviolet light and there is association of uh, atomic oxygen along with the molecular oxygen to form the ozone. Therefore, the dissociation and association is taking place and it is produced from the oxygen but in the last few years the association of the ozone is decreased and the dissociation of the ozone has increased. What are the various factors which are responsible for depletion of the ozone layer or the why the dissociation of the ozone has become faster as compared to the association of the uh, molecular oxygen with the atomic oxygen. Therefore, 
due to breaking and making uh, there is a steady concentration of ozone as t e a d y steady concentration of ozone in the stratosphere in the stratosphere but we have seen that there is a steady concentration of ozone in the stratosphere and the formation of ozone was explained by a scientist which was known as Chapman C H A P P M N. therefore these reactions which results in the formation of ozone uh, is known as Chapman reaction there the heat which is uh, liberated is absorbed by a third body third body the third body let us take it is m and what is the third body sometimes nitrogen gas is also there sometimes water vapors is also there which takes away the heat which is liberated due to this reactions that is the third body nitrogen gas water vapors uh, is responsible for taking away the heat which is liberated due to formation of the ozone therefore the uh, these reactions will results in the steady concentration of ozone in the stratosphere which is uh, known as the Chapman reaction but nowadays uh, we have seen that the breaking of the ozone is much much faster than the formation of the ozone and this phenomenon is known as depletion of the ozone layer but before coming to the depletion of the ozone layer I will explain the importance of this ozone layer why this ozone layer is important we have seen that the solar radiation it consists of UV visible and IR radiation the earth does not need any ultraviolet light therefore the ultraviolet light is absorbed by the ozone present in the stratosphere had there been no, ultra, no ozone layer then this UV light would reach the earth surface and it would cause major damage first major damage is the skin cancer problem skin cancer Secondly, it will affect the DNA of the cell and it will result in the mutation process. Gene mutation will take place. The third one it is said to be a cataract of the eyes. Cataract of eyes. Next one it is the breast cancer problem. Breast cancer problem will increase due to ultraviolet light. Then we have skin allergy skin allergy problems increases and ultimately human life is badly affected due to this ultraviolet light leukemia yes leukemia is one of the disease which is uh, caused due to this ultraviolet light therefore you can very well understand that this ultraviolet light it has no use on this earth therefore nature has provided a mechanism in which the ultraviolet light is trapped by the ozone present in the uh, stratosphere therefore this uh, ozone is very helpful for human life plant life and to the environment now let us discuss that what are the various factors responsible for the depletion of ozone layer the first important factor it is known as supersonic aircraft supersonic aircraft which fly at a great height they breathe air and they liberate oxides of nitrogen into the stratosphere and they cause damage to the ozone layer second point it is that uh, atomic explosion on the earth atomic explosion they are also responsible for the damage of the ozone layer because it mainly release oxides of nitrogen nitric oxide third one it is the major factor which is responsible due to burning of biomass burning of biomass now you will see that how burning of biomass results in the depletion of ozone layer because it results in the formation of hydroxyl free radical which participate in the reaction which results in the depletion of ozone layer now last but not the least a very important that this freons or chlorofluorocarbons freons or chlorofluorocarbons are responsible for damage of ozone layer prions which are known as chlorofluorocarbons and sometimes halons h a l o n s which consists these they consist of the chlorine atom but the halons which are used as fire extinguisher fire extinguisher 
are uh, uh, which consists of bromine atom it is responsible for damage of the ozone layer and the damage caused by bromine atom is 10 times greater than that of the chlorine atom therefore these are some of the factors which are responsible for the damage of ozone layer supersonic aircraft as i have told you that they fly at a great height they reach the stratospheric height, they breathe air, they liberate oxides of nitrogen due to burning of the fuel. Then we have atomic explosion taking place on the earth due to several chemical reactions, oxides of nitrogen, nitric oxide is released into the atmosphere and, and when it reaches to the stratospheric height, then they cause major damage to the ozone present there. Then burning of biomass, it, it produces hydroxyl free radical and this hydroxyl free radical, when it reaches to the stratospheric height, then they cause much damage to the ozone layer. Then we have, we have seen that freons, I will discuss the detailed chemistry of the freon, how freons are responsible for damage of the ozone layer and uh, the herons which are used as fire extinguishers they contain bromine and bromine is about 10 times much much powerful in damaging the ozone layer as compared to the chlorine atom which is present in the freon therefore these are some of the factors which are responsible for the uh, uh, damnation of the ozone layer we will discuss each of them one by one that how it causes great damage to the ozone layer. First, I will come to this point which is known as freons. Freons, they are known as chlorofluorocarbons. They are very general. We have been using uh, from last many years, but now US and other developed countries they have stopped using this compound which is known as chlorofluorocarbon in which the hydrogen atom have been replaced by fluorine and chlorine atom and that is why they are known as freons. There are a variety of freons present but the main use of freons it is in refrigeration industry. Refrigeration industry that this freon gas is used as cooling agent cooling agent and uh, secondly they are used as pressurizing agent also pressurizing agent and they are used as aerosols aerosols of the cans then purified uh, freon gas purified freon gas is used for cleaning used for cleaning the computer and the electronics uh, computer and electronics components computer and electronics components components therefore these are some of the major uses of this freons and earlier it was found that freons was uh, freons was inert on this earth they are not that reactive they are non inflammable but if these freons or the chlorine atom present in this freon if it reaches to the stratospheric height where the ozone is present then it will cause major damage therefore it is used as cooling agent in refrigeration industry and you have been using air conditioners you have been using refrigerators various cooling units which contain freon gas Basically about freons, I can say that uh, normal room temperature, freon is a gas, but under moderate pressure, it will liquefy and it will give off heat into the atmosphere and it will get cooled down. But uh, when it is vaporized, then I, I again absorb the heat and it becomes hot. Therefore, uh, at one state, when it is at room temperature, it, uh, when, when it is liquefied, then it gives it gives off heat. It itself become cold, and when these liquid uh, liquefied freons is converted into uh, vapors, or when it is vaporized, then it again absorb the heat and it becomes hot. Therefore, due to this hot and cold property of this gas, this has been used in the uh, cooling industry, which is known as refrigeration industry. As I have already told you, that it can be used as pressurizing agent. Then we have. Uh, it has been used in aerosols and cans as pressurizing agent. Freon gas is used for cleaning computer and the electronic components. In, in my next lecture, I'll discuss about the chemical reactions 
and about the supersonic aircraft how freon how ozone layer is damaged due to uh, burning of biomass and atomic explosion so this is all about my today's lecture thank you very much